Hi, everybody, and welcome to the broadcast where we have the North St. Paul Polars taking on the Tartan Titans in the opening round of the 4 4 8 quarterfinals. I'm John Miller alongside Sam Erickson. How are you doing tonight, Sam? Oh, I'm doing real good. We got a great matchup here. We've seen these teams play a lot in the past couple of years, and they are pretty evenly matched. Now, with playoffs added into the mix, we got a good game on our hands. Yeah, as you can see, the crowd's hyped up, the band's going. Let's take a look at how these two fared in the regular season. And first, we'll take you to the last matchup where North St. Paul beat Tartan 76 to 72. Yeah, it was back on January 13th right here at North St. Paul. And that's kind of been one of the things with this rivalry in the past couple of years. It seems like the hometown, or excuse me, the home team takes the victory. It's North St. Paul able to get it done in their own gymnasium. It's been a little bit tougher on the road. As you just saw, it was a close one. But North St. Paul picking up the win, 76-72. And as you guys know, this is really turning in to quite the rivalry. And the first game of the year was actually at February th uh, 13th, where Tartan beat North 65 to 60. So just outstanding matchups between these two teams, Sam. Yeah, we knew those were going to be good matchups. We have a great feeling this is going to be a good matchup. That one won by Tartan, and Antoine Kim has basically put the team on his back, had a team high uh, points, game high points, I should say, and really gave an effort and carried Tartan to that victory. And they're going to need a performance like that again to get a win here. And then, of course, North St. Paul is under their first-year head coach, Damian Johnson, the former gopher. And I think you'll have a little bit more about that, Sam. Yeah, not only does my man have some style right there with the nice Calvin Klein jacket, but he played four years at the University of Minnesota. Very impressive program that I'm sure we're all familiar with him uh, with here. Big Ten, all-defensive team in 09, and uh, played a couple years overseas in Australia. But, man, a defensive specialist, and you can tell the impact that he's had on this team uh, the way they play defensively. Yeah, now I think we're about to get the tip underway where Marcus Sims of North St. Paul will be here to tip this one off. Yeah. Let's get this game underway. Sims wins the tip, and that one will go out. Lankford Johnson's got it at the top of the key. He'll dribble, looking to get something going here at the start of the game, looking to give North the early lead in this matchup. He passes out to Good News. Good News has it, looking to make something go. He's got a wide open lane to the basket, loses it, loses it out of bounds. Looks like this one will stay with North St. Paul. Yeah, it looks like Good News just lost hold of it. Stays with North, not sure of number 10. Uh, Joseph Kearney got a hand in there, but refs keep it here. It looks like Golden will be looking to pass this one, and he gets it into Sims. Sims gets it out to Good News at the top of the key. Gets it over to Langford Johnson. Back out to Phillips. Back out to Sims in the low post. He gets it across court pass to Langford Johnson, who hits the three. Now we've seen it in both these matchups, John. These teams can hit from beyond the arc. And Lakeford Johnson getting it started in his style. Yeah, now Kimmins, the leading scorer for Tartan, has the ball. He'll bring the ball up the court. Gets it out to the key, top of the key. Gets it out to number three, Di Agawome. Back out to Agawome. Yeah, he's going to be an interesting player. Kind of plays like a guard, but you saw him in there on the tip-off. Has some leaping ability. Plays a little taller than his height. Yeah, he sure does, Sam. And he gets out number two, Andre Jenkins Whitmore, who is the second leading scorer for this Tartan team, who has it at the top of the key. He'll get it back out to Kimmins, who dishes out to the corner for three, and Tartan answers back. A yeah, big three from Tartan. You know, that's something we saw in that second matchup I was at. Tartan really wanted to slow things down and run a half court offense. North really likes to get up and down the floor. They have a lot of athleticism, like to run. But Tartan was able to slow things down, so we'll see how that goes here tonight. Nice corner three for Kearney there to get to answer right back. And good news has an open lane once again, loses the handle. Looks like this one's going to be a foul on the ground, so this one will be passed out from the baseline. Boy, good to see Antoine Kimmins get quickly up after that one as he went way sky high to try and make the block. I think he even landed on his head. 
But he's all right. Gave a thumbs up to the bench. And it's going to take more than that to keep him out. Boy, so look at that. Golden looking for Phillips. Phillips has got it in the corner. Gets it back out to Good News at the top of the key. Good News looking to make a move. Passes it out to Langford Johnson, who hit a three to start the game. Gets it out to Sims, back to Langford Johnson, who's got it to Phillips. Out to Good News. Good News looking to start off hot, Sam, as we talked about. In big games, he has been known to really struggle. Uh, the difficult thing with for good news. Langford Johnson with the finger roll. He's got all five points really going for North St. Paul. Kevin's so looking to go the other way. What I was going to say about good news is, you know, I mean, he's, he's got a reputation, so they have a defender shadowing him the whole game. You know, you're going to see what he's going to be able to maybe uh, open up for his teammates, what he can do in that regard. Yeah, you really can't blame him, Sam. Jenkins Whitmore has it at the top of the key. Gets it out to number 22, that's Hartman. Hartman gets stuffed by Sims. Tartan gets it right back, and there's going to be a foul on the shot of Angawome. And he'll go to the line for two. Yeah, Brady Hartman had a very good game in that Tartan victory back on February the 13th. Knocked down some big three-pointers, did a lot of the dirty work underneath. Saw him have an impact there. Agawani, though, nice offensive board. So Agawame is looking for his first points of the night. And it really looks like Hartman is the size that Tartan really needed last year as Javon Walker was their tallest player at around six foot two. Yeah, Hartman definitely going to be working in that post all night long. That's his position. So Agawame misses the first. Five to three here with 15, 18 left to go. Hits the second, it's five to four. Lakeford Johnson looks to bring it up the court. Not your total uh, prototypical point guard. Sees over six feet. That's a promising young player for the Polars. You know, just a freshman a year ago, sophomore now, but man, he looks a little bit older than that. Yeah, good news, looking to get going. Takes a shot from the top of the free throw line. That one rolls out of the rim about as close as you can get to making the shot. Looks like a missed shot right there. North's looking to go the other way. Bryce Phillips gets it out. Easy pass to Goldie. Gold misses easy layup. That one's put back in. Now Marcus Sims, another player for the Polars. He had a good game. He does a lot of the dirty work, too. You know, nice offensive board, good putback for Sims. He'll have to step up, too, if uh, North wants to win this one. Yeah, it looks like Kimmins is looking to get going here as he's going to get a foul going up on the shot. He'll go to the free throw line for two. Looking to make this one a one-point game, Sam, as this one is close early. Yeah, we're still in the early stages. Still got a lot of fans piling in here. It's going to be a packed house. North Tartan, this team shares school district. They play each other twice a season, and now we're here in the postseason with a matchup. Yeah, not very far away as Kimmins Nails the first free throw to get on the uh, point total for the game. Yeah, a lot of familiarity and a lot of uh, friendships on both sides. So always makes this, uh, this rivalry a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, these kids have been playing all their lives against each other. So when they get to a stage like this, it just it makes it that much more sweeter. Kimmins looking to go two for two. That he does. Makes the score seven to six. It's a one-point ball game. Langford Johnson will push it up the court. Guarded by Agawame. Passes out to Phillips. Phillips takes a shot from the top of the free throw line. That one rolls in. He's on the board, got his first two points of the night. Now Kibbins is looking to push it up the other way. Gets it out to Agawame. Looking for Jacobs Whitmore, who's now got it. Hartman, is, it got it in the post. Out to Jenkins. Whitmore is going to take the three. That one rolls out. Hartman looks like he was held on that one. And North St. Paul is going to be called for the foul. This one's going to stay Tartan ball. Ooh, I thought that might go against Hartman. I thought he had kind of an arm bar there. But they're saying he's being held down. Foul goes against the pullers. And Jenkins, Whit Jenkins Whitmore has got to knock down that three-point shot. Yeah, it really looked like it was uh, Langford Johnson holding Hartman on that. So great call by the rest. But yeah, from this angle, luckily we had great camera shot by our volunteers here. Now they'll pass it in. Agawome gets the foul. He was going up for the shot, so he's going to get two free throws once again. That would have been a big make there 
for number three in white. Missed uh, one of two free throws his first time at the line. That's going to be a big thing here tonight, John, too. Always in these big games. Free throws, free throws, free throws. Yeah, it's the section 4-4A opening round, and free throws are everything in playoff play, as you just said, Sam, as Ogawome has missed two free throws now as he's one for three to start the night. Looking to go two for four, 50% shot. And that's really what you see in high school, Sam, is 50% of free throws are made. As now he's one for four, not how you like to get started at the free throw line. Yeah, almost the difference in the game, John. Good news, gets it out to Phillips. Phillips takes the shot, he misses. Nice board by Hartman. Yeah, excellent block, block out by 22. Yeah, Agawome, looks like that one will be tipped off by Phillips. And North really with the aggressive defense here in the early going, you're seeing some fouls, but also some steals. Looks like Tartan will pass this one out. There's a shot of Coach Johnson. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, a lot of times in postseason, teams are sort of feeling each other out, maybe playing for the first time of the year. This, this match is a little bit different as these teams are so familiar with each other. Kind of just going about business. Maybe a little bit of nerves here in the early going. Yeah, looks like we're going to get a foul down to Hartman, but there's a charge, and that one's going to go against Tartan. That's number one, Makiel Weems, the six foot three junior. Yeah, you might look for Weems to D up. Doesn't look like he's going to be doing it right now, but he's he spent some time D'ing up good news on their last matchup. Did a pretty good job. A nice job of drawing the foul on that one as Phillips is looking to push it up the court. Contested layup, and he misses. Out to number 21, who misses as well. Hartman comes down with the board. Kimmins is going to push it up quickly. North not giving Kimmins any room to breathe as he misses the free throw right there. Board by Weems. I don't know North. how Kimmins got to the basket there. Yeah, me either, Sam. And Phillips gets it out to number 21. Cochran, Cochran misses. He ends back up with it. It looks like we're going to have a jump ball here. And this one's going to go to Tartan. This, uh, the crowd's really into it, Sam. Everybody's into it. It's some fast-paced action, good matchup, and some good defense on display right here. Initial miss, now the follow-up. And a big rejection. I think that's Joseph Kearney. Sam, one thing we, we really didn't see last year from this North team that would have set them apart is we're going to go to timeout here with 12.50 left to go. I really feel like uh, there's a lot more hustle under this Damian Johnson-led North St. Paul team. Uh, that's not a surprise at all. Uh, knowing Damian Johnson and his time under Tubby Smith, something that they uh, seemed to emphasize quite a bit was conditioning and being able to uh, yeah, have your breath for defense. You know, defense, they always say, is about desire, about work ethic. And I think the more conditioning, the better you can handle that. And uh, certainly it seems to be the case here at North St. Paul. Definitely want to give a credit to Tartan. I think Tartan is for sure just going to keep somebody right on Good News. And uh, North St. Paul doesn't even really, aren't even looking to get the ball into Good News right off the bat here early. Yeah, now let's check out the Section 4 4 a bracket where Creighton and Hall got the one seed. Eastridge, the two, as we talked about pregame, Four top 10 teams in the state are in this bracket, Sam. So whoever wins this one is likely going all the way. Yeah, it's too bad. The Screen Nerve Hall team is very good, led by Oturu, one of the top players in the state. You know, it's unfortunate for North St. Paul and Tartan because both these teams, 20 plus win teams, and are four and five seeds in the section. So uh, as you can tell, deep, deep section. Yeah, it looks like Tartan now will come out of it without a timeout. Get it out to the top of the key. Hartman, the center looking for three, he misses. Nice board there by Lauren Cochran. Gets it out to gets it out to Carter who misses the three. Will be pushed up by Kimmins. There's a three and that one's missed. Tart North St. Paul's pushing the ball up the court. That's number 23. Number 22, excuse me, Brady or Hartman. Ag now we got. Golden with the ball. Golden is known for his deep shooting. Gets it back out to Carter. Gets it out to Cochran. Cochran looking for three of his own. That one's a little strong. That one's going to be boarded by Tartan. And Kimmins is looking to go the other way. Double teamed in the corner. Great defense by North St. Paul. Hartman's got it on the sideline. Kearney has it now. Back over to Jenkins Whitmore. Jenkins Whitmore gets it out to Kimmins. Kimmins gets it in. That one's good. 
I said it in the last game. It's like Kimmins is on a trampoline sometimes. When he goes down, comes back up, he's able to come back, come down and jump back up quicker than anybody out on the floor. Yeah, it looks like North St. Paul's going with quite the rotation. As tight as Dean now is the point guard from North St. Paul. Yeah, one thing of note is good news. Uh, had to leave the uh, arena for a second. He's back, headed towards the bench. See if Tartan can take advantage while he's gone. Dwan Carter with a nice move. Can't get it to go. Cocker gets the rebound. Can't get that one to go. North displaying some great defense here as Kimmins is pushing it the other way. That's back out. Jenkins Whitmore. Pass doesn't make it to him, and that one's going to be out of bounds. It's going to stay Tartan ball. And good news sitting there. Looks like he's going to check back in. I believe that's why he's sitting at the scorer's table, not checking in just yet. Yeah, Kearney gets the inbounds pass to Weems, who gets the loose ball. Now he gets it out to Kimmins. Loose ball now. Tartan's going to end up with it, and they're looking to go the other way. Bateman looking for three. He's got it. 12-7, North St. Paul. Uh, Bateman able to get a lot of time there. He got his legs under an excellent shot from the senior, really gathered himself, had the, knew he had the time, and knocks it down. Yeah, Weems gets it now. He gets it out to Kimmins. Kimmins looking to get his team going. Now it's out to Jenkins. Whitmore gets through to open Hartman, who takes the paw step, and he misses the layup. That one's to Bateman. Bateman with a nice board. Tight, tight as Dean now will push it up the court. Dean with a nice little spin move. Gets the layup just a little short. Weems with the board. Weems with a nice flow of the hair there. Nice pick by Titus, by number three, Golden. Golden gets it out to Carter. Carter gets the easy layup. And Tartan's just going to need to slow things down. I mean, you saw they got some good opportunities. Brady Hartman missed a couple right at the rim. I think maybe just a little bit of excitement, a little bit of energy, pushing off the backboard a little bit too hard. But yeah, the refs are letting him play so far as uh, Kimmins has taken a lot of contact. I think Mark Klingsborn has been in the ref's ear a little bit about that. Yeah, I think you're right, Sam. And now they get it to Kimmins, who gets stuffed by Sims. And North St. Paul's looking to go the other way. Dean's got it. Gets stuffed on the layup. Carter misses multiple chances at it. This one's going to be a foul on Tartan, so we'll stay with North St. Paul. And just frantic play. I think North St. Paul, by design, is trying to just run and go as fast as they can, and Tartan just cannot keep up right now. Well, I think what we're seeing with North St. Paul, they're doing a lot of rotation. Coach Damian Johnson's trying to keep the legs fresh, Sam, and I honestly think it's working. Seems to be right now, Antoine Kim, as we said, referees seem to be letting them play a little bit. Kimmins has been taking a lot of contact. He's working hard, but hasn't been getting the call so far. Yeah, folks, we always want to remind you to follow us on social media. That's Facebook.com and Instagram slash SECTV, as well as YouTube. And Twitter.com is SECTV Sports, or you can follow me at John SECTV or at Sam SECTV, although you're not so active on there, Sam. Yeah, I don't do a whole lot of tweeting. Just wait for the SEC stuff, and I'll take a look at that. And so this is, is this what you expected going into the first half of this game? North using their athleticism to create a little separation between them and Tartan. Not surprised by that at all. A little surprised by the score we got going right now. But Tartan, we saw, uh, we saw them miss a couple free throws, miss a couple shots close to the basket. And I think if they convert on those, we'd have a closer game. Tartan, I think they just need to slow down a little bit, try and uh, force North St. Paul in a little bit more of a half-court set. Yeah, it looks like Tartan's going to get some subs in here. They're going to get the inbounds pass out to Sims. Gets it out to Good News. Out to Phillips, who takes the shot. Doesn't get it to go. Rattles in and out. Nice board by Sims. He gets stuffed by Weems. Out to Good News, who gets stuffed as well. Sims has got it once again. We're going to get a foul on Tartan. I think this one's going to go against McKeel Weems. And it really seems like Weems has been all over the court, Sam. Yeah, he's definitely a high-energy, active player. I said they had him guard Good News for a while. It looks like they have him on Good News right now as Joseph Kearney, number 10, started out on Good News. But McKeel Weems, yeah, he's kind of sort of that defensive specialist, high-energy rebounder. Already pulled on a couple boards tonight. So Carter's got the post down. Looking for somebody to pass to. He gets it out to Phillips in the corner. Phillips will drive the lane. He gets a nice pass to Sims. Sims can't come up with it, but he'll put it up. Once again, another block shot by Tartan. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be the stat guy for this one. That was like four or five block shots on that one trip alone. 
couple yeah. different possessions for North, but nice defense from Tartan. Yeah, I think you're right, Sam. Weems has got it out. It's now the subbed in player, Miller. Miller gets it out to Weems. Looking for somebody to pass to. Gets it out to Agawame. Agawame checks back in the game. Now Miller's got it. Gets it over to Weems. It doesn't look like Weems is too comfortable outside the three-point line. Gets it out to Simmons. You can tell he's not as used to having the ball offensively. Weems, he gives it up pretty much whenever he gets it. Yeah, Simmons is really looking to get going. Good presence of mind from Good News. Simmons gets it out to Miller. Over to Agawome, who was open for a three. Could have took it if he wanted to. Weems gets it out to Miller. Back to Weems. Well, John, we talked about how, sorry, John, we talked about how Tartan wanted to slow things down. Well, they, they're going to want to get something from this possession as they've had the ball for a long time. You just got to get points after all this. Agawome somehow gets it up and in. Yeah, Miller, nice assist to Agawome. The pass was great. Agawome just throw up a prayer, and he gets that one to go. Now only down by five for Tartan here with over seven minutes left to play. Phillips has he gets it out to Good News, who takes the three. That one's a little long. Simmons is going to come down with the board. He's got Weems deep. You see Anton Kimmins just go right at the basket. Has wonderful aggression offensively. Draws a lot of fouls. Isn't afraid to go in there. Yeah, maybe he's six feet, 5'10", five, 5'11", five, something like that. Maybe even shorter. So you've got him listed at six foot even. But he goes in there with the big boys. Doesn't care. He'll leap up with them. He'll take contact. And you see it right there. Yeah, Kimmins will look into throwing the ball. It's usually your best passer as well, so not only is he a great scorer, he can throw it in. Gets it into Hartman at the top of the three-point line. Hartman showing some moves for a big man. Gets it out to Kimmins. Gets it out to the corner. Back out to Hartman, to Miller. Miller looks for three. That air ball, nothing but the bottom of the net without points. Good news is pushing it up the other way. Loses the handle, gets it out to Bateman. Bateman back to Capigal. Good news, loses on the way up, and looks like that one's going to be touched by Tartan. Although, if I think we watched the replay, I think that Good News might have just thrown that one out. I was going to say, I, he seems to have had some trouble tonight holding on to the basketball. We saw it in his first possession, and right there, I thought he just lost that one. There were a couple hands in there, though, and it's going to stay with North. Looks like Golden's going to pass this one in. He gets it in to Cochran. Cochran gets it out to Carter. Carter nails that one from deep. As we talked about, Sam, this kid's got a uh, three-point NBA range. Uh, we saw it on an episode of Sports Path the other day. We threw out a little graphic about how far behind the line he could hit it. Threw up one earlier in the game, almost went down. That's a good look. He's a kid, if he gets hot, he can hit it from almost anywhere. Yeah, so Kearney looking to get something going. He gets it out to the big man, Hartman. Hartman over to Agawome in the corner. Singer in the game now. He gets it. Up to Kimmins, and that one's going to be called for a reach-in on Cahill Golden. He's going to keep the ball at Tartan. And I think that's that's team foul number six on the Polar, so it'll be a one-and-one -one situation. Next foul, and that could be big for Tartan trying to get back into this one. Yeah, we really see that a lot, Sam, with North St. Paul. They're very aggressive, which leads teams to get the bonus as they inbound it in to Kimmins. Kimmins, look for Agawome. Agawome, great defense by North St. Paul. Agawome's got it at the half court line. Crosses over. Gets it out to Kearney. Kearney over to Singer. Singer's got it at the top of the key, pushing Bateman off of him. Out to Agawome. Just swarming defense by North St. Paul. Nice finger roll right there from Singer as he gets his first two points of the game. And like I said, important for Tartan when they hold the ball like that, you've got to get something from that possession. Nice job from Singer. Oh, Carter with some great moves. Unfortunately, he can't finish. And Kimmins comes up the board. Carter gets his own board, gets it out to Good News. Good News drives it in. Looks like he's going to get two. Unfortunately, got too fancy on the finger roll there. Carter looking for three. 
just in and out of that one, and Kimmins comes up with another board. I don't think I've ever seen basketball played at the clip, the speed that North St. Paul's going at right now. Dewan Carter got that offensive board. He shook his head and just threw up a three-pointer. <laughs> Kearney looks for his own three. Bateman comes up with the board for North St. Paul. Back out to Carter. Carter, an outstanding three-point shooter, fakes it again, gets it out to Bateman. Over to Good News. Good news, looking to get something going. Missed the easy layup on the last possession. He'll go up, looks like he gets hacked. He sticks with it, gets the two. Excellent strength from Good News to stay with that one. It seems like Tartan understands that Good News leaves the ball exposed when it's lower on his body. Hand poke it away. Oh, Carter had all day to shoot that three. That one just goes in and out of the net. Tartan's got the ball looking to go the other way. Singer's got it, gets it out to Hartman. Hartman hesitated for three. He gets it out to Kimmins. Over to Singer. Out to Agawame. Gets it out to Kearney who shoots another three. And he is 0 for 2 now on three-pointers. Carter looking to go the other way. Good news has got it at the low post. And it looks like he's going to reset up the North St. Paul offense. Swarming deep there from Kearney. Gets it out to Carter. Carter really seems like he's feeling it tonight, although he's missed a couple threes. He makes a good move, gets it out to Cochran. Cochran gets that one to not go. And we're going to have a jump ball here as Singer and Cochran are going at it. And I think possession arrow is going to stay right here. Yep. So ball will stay with North. Yeah, North missing a couple easy baskets, Sam, that they should have had. This score could very easily be 25 to 11. Absolutely. I would say North maybe. I mean, Tartan's not shooting the ball great. North might even be shooting at a worse percentage, but North St. Paul able to get a lot of offensive rebounds. Saw already on this possession a couple offensive boards. Still have the ball with them after the jump ball. See if they can get points. Good news is a nice pass to Bateman down low, and he gets the easy two. 23 to 11. Now North St. Paul has jumped out to a 12-point lead. 3.15 left to go in the first half. Hartman is going to push it up the court. Gets it out to Weems, who gets it to Kimmins. Throws back out to Singer. Over to Jenkins Whitmore. Out to Singer. Hartman now. Weems is looking for somebody to pass it to. Gets it up to Jenkins Whitmore. That one doesn't go. Weems showing great athleticism. He gets the two to go off the offensive board. There I say, McKeel Weems got a little Ben Wallace to his game right there, going up and making the bucket. Pretty much the only uh, offense he's got is the putback. Dean gets stuffed. Tartan is going the other way. Singer's got it. Now he's pushing the ball off the court. Gets it out to Hartman. Hesitated for three. He resets up. <laughs> Drains that one. Hartman. Makes the score 21 to 16. Tartan's on a 5 0 run. That could be big, John. I feel like uh, Hartman could get himself some of those opportunities as this game goes on. He's kind of that stretch big man that you see more and more these days. But uh, he can kind of just slip away, creep away from the basket, basket a little bit on Tartan's offense. And just a uh, nice shot fake and knocks it down. He hit a couple big ones in that Tartan win. So uh, Hartman might be an X Factor. And on top of that, one of the few seniors on this Tartan squad. I thought that might be an X Factor in this game as well. North, a few more seniors than Tartan. Got to wonder who's playing harder. Yeah, Jenkins Whitmore, of course, you saw, would set up that Hartman three-pointer. It was that great stuff. Coming all the way from the other side of the court. Read the player coming, Titus Dean coming in. Blocked him perfectly. Coach Johnson calls a timeout just to settle things down just a little bit. And he's going to get Sims back in the game here. Well, how many blocks do you suppose the Tartan defense has in this first half? Well, they got to have over seven. That's what I was thinking, somewhere in that range. But North St. Paul, a great job on the offensive glass, getting second chance opportunity, and a lot of times capitalizing on those second chances. Yeah, so Dean's got it now. He gets it out to good news. Good news guarded by Weems, and that's going to be a tough matchup for Good News to score tonight. Carter's got it. Over to Bateman. Bateman doesn't hesitate, gets blocked. That one was definitely tipped. Kitman, Kimmins once again with the rebound. Another block from the Tartan defense. Hartman gets it out to Jenkins. Whitmore gets it out to Singer. Singer's got it now. He makes a low post move. He gets blocked by Carter. And there's going to be a foul on the loose ball. Looks like this one's going to stick with Tartan, Sam. 
Yeah, Tartan slowly creeping their way back in, playing good defense, not give it, uh, not allowing a second chance opportunity on that last possession. And then if you're north, I don't think you want Bateman necessarily creating his own offense. That's where, you know, good news is getting deed up. He's going to have Bateman or players like Bateman maybe open on the wings if he can do a little bit of penetrating. And I think that is uh, going to suit North St. Paul a little bit better. Yeah, I think you're exactly right, Sam. And that's going to set up the one and one now for Tartan as Singer makes the first one. Makes this one a two possession game now. Four points. And things were looking pretty bleak there for Tartan. 11 points with uh, about two minutes left to go in the first half. You're wondering where the offense was coming because they've held uh, Anton Kimmins in check quite well. But able to rattle off some points. We got ourselves a ball game again, John. Yes, yeah, Sam. Tartan's on a 7 0 run right now. The singer goes two for two from the line. And that's not what you want to see if your coach, Damian Johnson, as Dean will look to bring it up the court. Dean gets it out to Phillips. Nice pick by Sims. Phillips had some open lane to the basket. Didn't like what he saw. Gets it out to Good News. Good News guarded by Weems. Outstanding defense by Weems. Good News loses the ball. Gets it right back. And he's looking for himself. Takes a shot at his favorite spot of the court. And that goes in. Good move from Good News. Looks like we're going to have a full court press here by North St. Paul. We've really seen that in the early going. Jenkins Whitmore puts it up with his left. He gets it to go. Nice running jumper by Jenkins Whitmore. It's now a three point lead for North St. Paul. We got a little timeout as something on the court. I think North St. Paul bench was noticing, it was trying to get the ref's attention, but Tartan was able to get that bucket in there before. But yeah, it was just like uh, where you kind of throw in the volleyball net to cover. Yeah, exactly right, Sam. A 9, one, uh, nine to one run now for Tartan as Phillips has it now. Phillips looking to make something going, has it on the baseline, gets it out to Dean, Dean for three. He gets it, Drano. Good kick from Bryce Phillips, left his feet, but able to find a teammate wide open, a nice knockdown. Yeah, great court vision, Sam, on that one is Kimmins picks the ball up at the half court line, something you've been told not to do since you were little, and now Kimmins looks to make something going on here. He passes it back out into the corner. Looks like that's Kearney. Not a Jenkins Whitmore with that beautiful shot on the last possession of the court. They'll look to score the last shot before half. Jenkins Whitmore behind the back. He goes up for the layup. That one's no good. Coming down by Carter, and that'll be the end of the first half, folks. North St. Paul 26, Tartan 20. Just an outstanding first half of basketball, Sam. Yeah, close spot battle. We knew it would be probably single digits, and that's uh, what we got right now. Tartan struggling a little bit to score the ball. Ended this first half pretty well, but a big three-pointer to close it out by North St. Paul, and that's why they got the six-point lead. Yeah, so that's your score, folks. North St. Paul 26, Tartan 20, and we'll see you at the start of the second half. make retirement happen. After all, you made her college years happen. Watcha. Opening that education savings account when she was little. Spearheading a campus tour. And another, and another, and another, and another. Bam! Deciphering financial aid. She was like, what? But now she's like, yeah! you waste planning for college. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Listen. All it took was someone who would insist that I just try. Suddenly everything was turned around because they judge you. You tell them, I don't need this. No one is going to understand. Unless they've been through it, how can they? Then one day you realize... You feel so hopeless. I need help. 
I need help. You feel so hopeless. Then one day you realize... Unless they've been through it, how can they understand? I don't need this. No one's going to judge you. Suddenly everything was turned around because they insist that I just try. All it took was someone who would just... Listen. Peace. Look, it's those guys. What's good? What's up? What's happening today? Let's see those pearly whites, man. Yeah. Check it out. Thanks. Oh, cool. 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 Oh,
I think you're exactly right, Sam. So they get it out to Jenkins Whitmore. Agawome tries to get that board from Good News. Good News says, not in my house. Gets it out going the other way, and that's Cahill Golden. Gets it back out to Good News. That was an excellent block out by Good News on that last possession. I thought Agamwani could have been called for over the back. They let it go as uh, Good News cleared the ball. But uh, nice fundamentals, doing the little things. Great to see for number one. And once again, Tartan, tough D against Good News, slaps it out of bounds. Now North St. Paul regroup with it. Golden gets it out to Good News, who takes the NBA three. That one no good. Rebound. Golden puts it back in for two and one. And a second chance points there. Khalil Golden, huge offensive board, not only gets the bucket, gets the foul. And a good start for North here in the second half. Yeah, so eight-point lead now, looking to go for nine. And that's something we saw a lot in the first half, Sam, was North St. Paul getting many offensive rebounds. Yeah, they got out to a 10-point lead at one point. Tartan able to creep back in with a seven-point run. That kind of stopped the second chance points for North in that little run, but. So Golden makes it a three-point play. I think that leads him actually got up to 12 at one point in the game. And then Tartan went on a nice run and as they get it out to Kearney, who's got it. Kearney gets it out to Hartman. Hartman in the corner. Gets it out to Jenkins Whitmore. Back out to Kimmins. Kimmins not scoring much that first half. The last two times they played, Kimmins with over 30 points. Back out to Jenkins Whitmore looking for three. That one's no good. I thought Phillips got away with a little push in the back there. It looks like it's going to go to North St. Paul ball as that one trickles out of bounds. A good hustle from Kearney, not able to save it. But if you're Jenkins Whitmore, got to knock down that open three-pointer. Great look. So Langford Johnson, as we talked about, not your prototypical point guard, but he'll bring it up the court. Phillips. Gets it out to Golden. Golden out to Langford Johnson, but he'll get called for the travel. This one's going the other way. Yeah, just took one too many step, a little indecisive, dragged that pivot foot as he was still moving. Turnover. And so Kimmins will bring it up the court. Looks like North St. Paul's got a little bit of a press going on, not full court. Kimmins gets it back out, out to Jenkins Whitmore. To Kimmins, who puts up the three, and that one's no good. Agawome with the offensive rebound. And if you're Tartan, you just wonder, where is this offense going to come from? Kimmins has been shut down a little bit, got a good look there from three, but that's not really his game. He wants to get into the paint. But they're really congesting that paint here, Sam. North St. Paul's really having a nice defense in order to stop Kimmins as Hartman's looking for somebody to pass to. Showing some good range earlier in the game. Out to Jenkins Whitmore on the baseline, out to Agawome who goes up strong. Looks like he get called on that one. And he's going to go to the line for two. I got one man not a little happy on that one. Thought he should have made that bucket. It should have been an and one. Yeah, I think for a second there, he thought after that first big step, he might have a chance at a big throwdown, trying to posterize good news a little bit. Too far from the basket. I think there, John, you want to just make sure you get it into the cup. If you get that additional foul, you can add a free throw to it. So he and misses the first. I was say, we've seen Agamwani struggle from the free throw line here early, or so far in this one. Yeah, now one for five at the free throw line tonight. Nagawome, it's nice when you're at the court level and we're so close, you can really see the guy's fierceness. He definitely wanted to throw that one down, Sam. So one of seven here, or one of six, excuse me, from the free throw line. And this would be a three-point game. Phillips goes up strong, he gets that one to go. 11-point lead now for the Polars. That's a big swing there with Agamwani. Looked like he might just get two easy points, almost an and one. Doesn't get anything from the charity stripe, and then North goes and scores on the other end. The well, last time North St. Paul and Tartan played, Tartan came back from being down by six with a little over five minutes left. So this team does have it in them as they turn over the ball. Out to good news, or to Sims. Sims gets fouled on that one, and he'll go up to the line for two. So one for six tonight. For Agawome on the free throw line, really the key here. And Sims, really an unnecessary foul by Hartman because I thought Sims was a little too deep in order to make that layup, just a foul that just didn't need to happen. So that's two team fouls now for Tartan. Yeah, I think Hartman was just trying to make sure Sims didn't make an easy bucket, probably not quite aware where he was on the court. Decent foul, we'll see if Sims can convert from the line. Can't get the first. Yeah, so Sims clanks that one off the back of the iron. 
John, I can see why this North St. Paul team has had so much success. I mean, I've only covered two, maybe three of their games all year, but in each one of those games, a different one of these guys has kind of stepped up. We saw Marcus Sims one game, Bryce Phillips, Khalil Golden. You know, they can kind of spread it around. And then on top of that, you have a player like Good News with a lot of talent on this polar roster. Yeah, don't forget Jaywan Carter earlier this year put up 28 for one of our games. It's Matamidi, actually, I think that game was. Absolutely, so many good players, forget about them. And Jenkins Whitmore gets it down to Weems, who gets, tries to put it up for Hartman. Great defense. Now North St. Paul's going the other way. Golden gets it in for the layup. It's now a 15-point ball game, Sam. 14-27 left to go here. And not sure. I think they maybe got Bryce Phillips on a push. Not a, yeah, not exactly sure. Did the battle? No, I don't know if the basket counted. I don't think it did. We got 33-20 on the scoreboard in here. So that's what we're going to go with. Yeah, I'm not, not too sure of the call. I know it was a push off for sure as Weems gets it out to Kimmins. Kimmins has got to get something going as they dish it out to Jenkins Whitmore down to Hartman. Back out to Jenkins Whitmore, tries to hit the NBA three. A little short. North St. Paul comes up with the ball. Fortunately, Jenkins Whitmore tries to save it, throws it off his arm, and it's going to stay North St. Paul ball. Yeah, just that little bit off, you know, maybe coming to these games, these high school games, we talk about home court advantage. Some people say, you know, how much of a difference can it really make? Well, it's about being in a different gym. You mean having different viewpoints of the basket. You see Tartan just can't get things to go down. And I have a feeling if they were at their own gym, they would have the comfort to make some of those shots. Yeah, so Golden misses the running layup. Weems comes back down with the board. I really like this Weems' game, Sam. He could really, I think he should play more low post, but he doesn't. So Kimmins is looking to get something going, gets rejected by Sims. And speaking of Ben Wallace, that was a Ben Wallace-like block. Yeah, I think we have a foul before the rejection, and it's on good news. So I'd like to take another look at that one. Let's see it Don't right here. Don't want to criticize the officials. Wow, that's a... You would have thought it would maybe be on Marcus Sims, if anybody. That's where sometimes you feel a, a player like Good News with that type of recognition. Sometimes you attract some negative attention out there from the officials. Yeah, well, it definitely was a bad call, Sam. Yeah. I think you're right on that one. We've seen good, a lot of fouls go against Good News that don't really seem to be fouls. I think the important thing for him in this game, and we, I think I've seen it already, is that he keeps that body language. He stays positive regardless of having a bad call go against him. We've seen him in other games. Bad call goes against him. He kind of just takes himself out of it. Hey, guess what? North ends up losing because their best player isn't giving it every Everything he's got because he thinks the world's against him. Well, here tonight, I think he's played a lot more positive, and it's certainly uh, translated on the scoreboard. So Kimmins goes one for one from the line, nails the second one. 11 point game now, by no means is Tartan out, Sam. And I think you're definitely right on that assessment on good news. He's definitely being a facilitator tonight, c commanding double teams, passing the ball out to, you know, players such as Bateman or even Carter, and setting them up for open shots. Yeah, just being content not being the leading scorer, you know. You so, don't have to be the leading scorer to be the leader. Sorry, John. Exactly, Sam. Exactly right. So, Lankford Johnson just a sophomore really controlling the ball right now. And it looks like he travels. Lankford Johnson doesn't look like he thinks he traveled. But nonetheless, Tard's going to get the ball. Looking to make this one back into single digits. Now we're going to... A penny rolled out onto the court. I think they're trying to get the attention of the officiating crew, but play's going to continue. So Kimmins will look to get some points on the board for Tartan here. The singer was trapped down the corner, makes an errant pass. Nice defense right there by North. So they get it out to Cochran. Cochran gets stripped by Hartman. Hartman gets it to Kimmins as Kimmins looking to quick go up the other way. Kimmins out to Weems, over to Hartman. Hartman gets away with a travel, gets the shot to go. Nine point game now, Sam. Hey, if you're Tartan, you want that. I mean, it doesn't have to be pretty. Nice little scoop pass from McKeel Weems underneath. The Hartman maybe got away with the walk, but got the roll. Yeah, definitely was a travel. And nonetheless, there's no ref there with a good view to see it. Two points for Tartan. Is Golden's gonna push this one out to Carter. Carter nails that one. Boy, Dewan Carter, number five for North St. Paul. He sure enjoys making a three-pointer. 
You see him do a little 360 spin, throw some eyeglasses. Kearney answers back with his own three. Back to a nine point game here. Back to back threes by both teams. And Carter's my type of player, Sam. I love guys who aren't afraid to shoot the three. And that's the way the game has evolved uh, over the last few years, especially from the NBA. And it's starting to trickle down. Oh, uh, absolutely. High school. You love Carter's uh, confidence. I think Coach Damian Johnson might tell you he's a little too overconfident sometimes. He uh, tends to just throw the ball up there every once in a while, but a great shot on that last one. But how about Tartan with a big response, getting a three of their own? You know, not too long ago, with about 13 and a half minutes left to go, John, they hadn't scored a point here in the second half. Now got seven quick ones, including hitting a big three. I wonder how that three is going to help their confidence just seeing it go down as they've struggled from beyond the arc. Yeah, they sure have, Sam. And that's what you're talking about. I know uh, Carter, you talked about Coach Johnson not wanting him to shoot so many threes sometimes. But sometimes that's what your team needs, I feel like. You need a guy who can spread the court a little bit, get guys like Sims a chance to open it up down low. Well, we certainly see with the pace of play that this North St. Paul team does, it's kind of a modern basketball team. Want to push the floor, OK with shooting three-pointers, OK with putting up a lot of shots. Because, hey, the more you shoot, maybe the more you're going to make. It's kind of their philosophy in my opinion. And so far, it's worked out pretty well for North St. Paul. But you can see what happens, though, when you do that, when you have those quick possessions and you get stopped. Tartan's able to kind of come back into the game slowly. You know, never quite out of it with a team that runs offensively so fast. If they kind of go cold, the other team has a good chance to get back into it. Yeah, as I was talking about, Tartan was down by six or so the last time these two played in the second half, and they came back, and they won by five points so yeah Tartan came back not by playing frantically I mean they played slow and just made the most of every possession looks like we're gonna get a charge the other way that's a great call as Weems set himself up all day good news should have seen that one is as Weems planted his feet perfectly and he gets that one to go the other way Sam and this is the best thing I've seen out of good news in the couple years I've been following not necessarily this play but the fact that he kept his head up, he looked straight over to his coach at the bench after that call, didn't let him affect him at all. Yeah, I like it. You're starting to see good news mature as a player. This young man's still unsigned. Hartman's got it down, almost travels again. I thought he should have went up with it, Sam. Could have got maybe called for the foul. As Miller puts up a three, that one's good. It's a six-point game with 11.30 left to go. 36-30 right now. Yeah, big shot. We're having some issues. Pack crowd in here. We're having a little bit of an issue with our camera on the clock. So if you don't see a score, don't see a time, we'll try and update you best we can. We'll try and get that fixed. So Lankford Johnson gets it into Cochran. Back out to Lankford Johnson. Gets it out to Carter. Carter with the crossover shoots a three. Airballed it. Lankford Johnson saved by Cochran. Gets it out to Lankford Johnson. Lankford Johnson will set up the offense. Yeah, it looked like McKeel Williams, a little bit of hesitation on that offensive rebound. Thought a teammate was going to go get it. North pounces, second chance opportunity. Yeah, Williams is the board man. He definitely needed to go out and get that, Sam. Nice analysis right there. As good news goes up with it, gets that one to go. Just what North needed on that possession. So Kimmins has got it, gets it out to Kearney. Back out to Kimmins. Kimmins not scoring much tonight, Sam. Yeah, North St. Paul, great job bottling it up. He must but have just hurt <laughs> Kimmins now up to eight points. 38 to 33, it's a five point game. This is the closest Tartan has been all or since the beginning of the first half. Yeah, they got it down to three for a second there towards the end of the first half. Good news feeling it, nice board there. Kimmins almost gets away with the travel, he slips, he puts it up. Doesn't get the bucket to go, but he'll go to the line. And we got ourselves a ball game again, John. Now, I think Antoine Kimmins did get away with the travel, if you're calling it by the book. He obviously hit a slick spot, spot on the court. His pivot, or his plant foot's just slid. No, he took two steps. Yeah, and you're right. I thought a foot slid there, so maybe. Yeah, that he comes up with his own board. Doesn't get it much. I think he keeps that foot up, saying that, that left, left foot. It's going to be a little bit obstructed as it kind of slid out. Tough to see there. I think it maybe moved a little bit. Regardless, wasn't called. And Kimmins is going to go to the free throw line. Yeah, watch it back. Try and find a little slide. I think, I think when he slides, it doesn't matter. One step, two step, keeps it going. His left, other left foot, his third step never touched the ground. Good no call. I like, I, I like the no call. Fortunately, he grabbed the offensive board, couldn't get it to go. 
on the next shot, and he was at point blank range and really the bucket that you needed. Nonetheless, Kimmins is going to go to the line for two to get them even closer. They could make this a one possession game, Sam. Yeah, we'll see if Kimmins has a better time at the line than Agamwani. And that is now, I think, one of eight, one of seven for Tartan uh, at the line. Uh, I think it could be a little less. I think uh, they have a little more than that. Sam Kimmins made two of two earlier in the game. I know Agamwane is one of six, which is the difference in this ball game right now. Absolutely. I was going to say, at least six misses from the stripe. So it's a four-point game now. Lakeford Johnson gets it up the court. Out to Golden. Golden gets it to Carter. Back out to Lankford Johnson. Johnson's got a wide open lane to the net. He puts it up with the left. That one's good. A great penetration from Lankford Johnson. Just a sophomore, got a lot of time as a freshman last year, and it's paying off. Yeah, I can see this kid going D1, Sam. He's got a lot of growth to his game, a lot of size. Definitely an outstanding player, and he always seems to show up, whether it's on the point sheet or whether he may not score a lot of points all the time, but he fills the stat sheet up in other ways. Kimmins gets stripped. Cochran on the ground. Looks like that one's going to go off of Cochran with Kimmins on top of him. I don't know how the ref saw that one. Nonetheless, it's going to stay tart. It's going to stay with Tartan. Yeah, I think uh, Cochran, when he tried to squeeze the ball, just kind of squirted it out and went out of bounds. Ooh, the uh, Golden could have got teed up there. Ref keeping his whistle in his mouth. Golden not very happy. Obviously, he didn't swear at the ref, or that would have been an easy tech. So they get it back out to Kearney. Kearney with the no-look pass to Weaves. Weaves puts it up, gets it to go. What a pass. What a pass from Kearney. McKeel Weaves not known for his offense, but he knows to just hesitate and get a good look, can elevate, and bumps it off the rim and in. Yeah, back to a four-point game. Lankford Johnson has the ball, gets it out to Carter. Carter has a wide open baseline, gets it out to Dean. Dean back out to Carter. Carter gets it out to Langford Johnson. He's got some moves. Back out to Carter. Cochran with the moving screen there. Langford Johnson has it once again near the half court line. Out to Carter. North St. Paul really slowing the tempo now with the four point lead, but a lot of time on the clock. Plenty of time. Langford Johnson once again with a wide open look to the basket, gets it to go. Beautiful finger roll. And that was by design. That is a coaching decision right there. I don't think they've shown that a whole lot as a big screen set by Cochran gave the lane wide open to Lankford Johnson. Yeah, Lankford Johnson now tied for the game high in points with nine. Kimmins has nine as well. Now Kimmins has it at the top of the key. Gets it out to Miller. Miller for three. That was just a little short. Hartman needs to be more aggressive. Was in line. We're going to get a moving screen. Nice call by the referee as Golden gets called with the foul. And that was an easy call for the referee to see. And this Tartan, this Tartan crowd is going nuts. You'll watch it right here. So Miller misses the three. Hartman almost comes up with the board. We're going to get a loose ball here. We're going to get Carter. Carter throws his shoulder into it. And that's going to get called every yeah. time, Sam. I think Kent Miller did a great job selling it. I mean, it was a tough shot he took. And I think the right call, Khalil Golden smartly go, heads back towards the bench as he had some choice words for the ref after a call not too long ago. Didn't like that one either, but North St. Paul smartly got him over to the bench. Yeah, great job to get him to the bench before he says anything. As we've seen, technical fouls can't change the way of the ball game as we saw against Matamida and Columbia Heights last year when Shane Frost got the technical that completely changed the game. Nonetheless, Kimmins has the ball. He throws it out to Weems. Weems. Look out to Miller, nice pump fake. Weems has got it now. He's going to drive the court, puts it up strong, doesn't get it to go. Cocker gets the board. A tough possession there for Tartan. It looked like a lot of the Titan players forgot that Hartman was on the court. Hartman unsure kind of where to go. I, I was going to say they want to get him out beyond the arc. He looked good from beyond the arc, but they need him down low. Phillips goes up with the running layup, and he gets it. It's an eight-point game now. Modem er North St. Paul on a 4 nothing run. And Hartman having some issues with the screen as well. 
expecting help, not getting it on those drives. Yeah, Jenkins Whitmore back in the game. Quick pass to Weems, who puts it up strong with his left. Gets it to go. Gets the lead back down to 6, 44 to 38. Yeah, Weems getting into good space there. And showing that he is more than just a rebounder and a defensive specialist, getting on the scoreboard a little bit here tonight. Yeah, Williams Justin Jr., him and Kimmins are going to be a great tandem next year in their senior years. But guess what? This year is not over. So Dean has it on the far side. And if you notice, North St. Paul is taking good news out of the game the last few minutes. I think they bring him in around the four minute marker. Five is Lakeford Johnson gets the three, keep his legs fresh. Kimmins tries to save it. Nobody there, North St. Paul maintains possession. Langford Johnson slowing it down. Exactly what Coach Damian Johnson is whispering to him over on the sidelines. Nothing ever phases Coach Johnson. He always is calm, cool, and collected as Dean takes a three, nails that one. It's a nine point game. And this might be a little, getting a little out of reach here with 5.45 left to play, I think. Tartan's got to score this possession, Sam. Yeah, Tartan having a really tough time communicating on defense. Titus Dean able to just walk into that three-pointer and knock it down. Nobody contesting. It's more of a question of who's supposed to pick him up. So Hartman gets it down to Kimmins. Kimmins is stuffed by Carter. Carter's pushing it up. Carter going the other way. Looks like he gets fouled. Doesn't get to go. Hartman keeps possession alive. Jenkins Whitmore gets up to Kimmins. And Lankford Johnson gets the flop, definitely a flop, but he gets called. And it's going to say North St. Paul ball. Yeah, I'd like to take a look at that one. I thought it maybe was a good call, but I wasn't able to really see the feet in real time. So we'll take a look. Just like Kimmins was so decisive on what he wanted to do, it was easy for Lankford Johnson to just set up there. He definitely and contact was made. Sorry, Sam. So. Phillips will push it up the court. Gets it out to Sims. Easy pick out there for Jenkins Whitmore. He's going to push it up the court. Goes up with the left. Kimmins with the offensive board. Puts it up strong. He gets it to go. It's a seven point game with five minutes left to go. Yeah, one of the big problems for Tartan so, uh, tonight has been the length and height of North St. Paul. Tartan's able to get to the basket, but a lot of their guys just a little bit shorter and having to deal with that height. Antoine Kimmins can do it a lot, but not a, a whole lot of these other Tartan players. Yeah, looks like we're going to get a push off here. Coach Johnson not happy. Moving screen. Coach Johnson calls a timeout. That was a game changer right there. This is now Tartan has the chance to get this one down to five points or even four. Boy, just when you think North St. Paul is taking control of this thing, Tartan just hangs around. North St. Paul, a couple of careless plays, fouls away from the ball, some turnovers. Not exactly sure what that call was. I think it was Titus Dean with the moving screen on that one, Sam. Not much there, but it was there. Yeah, I just didn't quite see that on that replay. Not much, as I was talking about it. That's what Coach Johnson right now is asking the referee, not happy about that call at all. And to tell you what, in this kind of game, that's really a foul that you, that, you know, it's a it's a touchy call. Normally you like to see five minutes and less. You like to see the refs keep the whistles in their mouths. Yeah, kind of surprising. The refs have been letting them play quite a bit today. But uh, that is going to be seventh team foul on North St. Paul if they call that a... Yeah, you'll see it right. Yep, yeah, just a little bit of a moving screen. I, it's it's barely made, but it impeded the defender's movement, and the ref calls it. It's it's a good call. I think Not it's another case there. Sorry, John, of Andre Jenkins Whitmore making a good play. You know, he saw that he was obstructed. Maybe made a little bit more of that. Made it look more like a screen rather than just a handoff, and he gets the call. Yep, exactly. Yeah, it was definitely because he started to put his hand down when he, so he knew the contact was coming. Yeah, I'm not even. I'm not certain Titus Dean was really even trying to set a screen more than just hand a ball off and get out of the way. A little rub, but. Yeah. Got called. Exactly, Sam, exactly. So 446 left to go here, folks. North St. Paul 47, Tartan 40, as we're in the opening round of the section tournament of 4 4 a basketball, the highest basketball in Minnesota, which arguably is the best section in 4 or in 4A basketball, Sam. Yeah, these teams better work out some issues tonight because uh, most likely they got a date with Crete Narum Hall in the semifinal, whoever wins this one. And that features uh, probably the best team in state and the best player in state. I'm not going to lie to you, Sam. I think North St. Paul would match up better uh, against uh, Crete and Durham Hall. But there's nobody, I think, that could guard Oturu besides Sims. Sims would have to use that big body. 
Nonetheless, Jenkins Whitmore gets it down to Weems. Weems driving the lane, goes up strong with his left and one. He's going to have a chance to cut this to four. Nikhil Weems is really determined out there right now. You love to see that. Tartan always seems to have somebody come and step up in big games when they need to. McKeel Williams, what a shot, right-handed. I believe the kid's a lefty, gets it to go. McKeel Williams came into the game averaging 4.2 points per game. Tonight, can't really see the he's scoreboard. Up, he's right. up to eight, I believe, right now. We're a little obstructed. Yeah, he's got eight points exactly right, Sam. Having an outstanding game, he misses the free throw. Gets it out to Good News. Good News back in the game. Fresh Lake, Sam, that's huge. Absolutely. I think they sat him on purpose so he could finish out this game in about four and a half minutes to go. Phillips has got the ball. Now I think we're going to see North St. Paul slow it down just a little bit. Out to Dean, who had a nice three earlier from that same side, who gets it to Sims. Sims to Lankford Johnson. Lankford Johnson. We're going to get a foul here off the ball. Looks like this one's going to go against Hartman. Hartman getting a little frustrated with the officials as well. Keel Weems kind of had to go over there and check him a little bit, say, hey, you're all right, calm down. Man, these, kids, these, your fault. these guys are quick to get pretty angry, Sam, so I think he's, uh, Yeah, it looked like that ref was watching him the whole time. Yeah. The ref, that's not even that ref's kind of call, so. Gave him a little forearm shiver, but not a whole lot to it. More of a basketball play than anything, Sam. But nonetheless, you're going to get called. That's their fourth team foul. Phillips has got it. 47-42, 349 left to play. It would be quite a different basketball game right now, John, if uh, Tartan was able to hit those free throws. Yeah, I think you're exactly right, Sam. If Phillips has it on the baseline, Phillips looking to make a move. Looks like he's going to get fouled. And once again, that's Hartman. Two in a row for Hartman, but that's only their fifth team foul. So not a bad foul. 335 left to go. And I think that's only the second personal on Hartman. Nobody really in foul trouble on Tartan's end. Excuse me, that one foul was on Kearney. North St. Paul, a couple players with three fouls. Bryce Phillips, Langford Johnson, but it looks like everybody's going to more than likely going to be able to finish this one out. Yeah. Hey, we'll see what happens. This is a great... Great matchup, Sam. These two teams this is turning into quite the rivalry, and I think it will be for quite some time. Inbounds pass to the top of the key for Good News. Back it down, Weems. You love that. Good News didn't force it. Mm. Great, great. Dribble it back out. Almost went hard. Good News travels. And Lake for Johnson arguing that there should have been a foul way before that, and I think so as well. Nonetheless, Let's watch this. You're going to see good news here. Get fouled by Jenkins Whitmore, but it wasn't. Keeps his dribble, a little street ball kind of move. Yeah. Keeps it going, loses the ball, travels. That was uh, a tough possession. Just lost hold of the ball a little bit. Good job to regain it. But I think the correct call. So Kearney's got it at the top of the key. Looking for Hartman. Hartman, this he can shoot it from there. Kimmins. Making a move down the lane. Kearney's got it again. North St. Paul needs to get something going here. 2.50 left to go. A basket would be crucial. So Kearney's got it over to Weems. Right in front of us, Weems goes up strong with his left. Expected contact, gets it to go. It's a one possession game. Akil Weems might have the magic touch, I don't know. Getting close to the basket right now, and it's going in. Even if Tartan loses this game, this is a game for McKeel Weems to, to, to build off of going into next year and know that his potential is near the top of 4-4-A basketball, Sam. That's a good point, John, and that's the importance of even, even if you've got a game you might lose in the next round of this tournament, at least you get another couple days of practice, another game to develop. Str stripped away. Kibitz has got it. He's going to get contact. Doesn't get it to go. Eight fouls now, Kimmins pulled up by Weems. Weems giving a little attaboy, Sam. What do you got for hey, him? Yeah, I told you, he's an energy guy. Weems showing that energy even with the celebration and picking up his teammates. But how about the quick hands from Andre Jenkins Whitmore? And good job, uh, Kimmins getting down there, draw the contact, couldn't quite get the bucket to go. Yeah, he's got to make these free throws, Sam, but we've seen the last few possessions. It's Jenkins Whitmore doing that backside steal, and I think. Coach Klingsborn has been telling him to do that. Good defense there. Nonetheless, 
free throws being the deciding factor in this game, something my man Sam highlighted at the start. Yeah, and if uh, Tartan goes on to lose this game, they're really going to kick themselves. This has been not a great effort at the line. So a two-point game now. Kimmins has 12 points on the night. Lankford Johnson looking to push the ball up the court. Look at this score, John. They had a couple of low scoring affairs in the regular season, but nothing like this. This is what happens in postseason play. Yeah, this is outstanding basketball, Sam. March Madness. Another steal almost for Whitmore. Just like this you were saying. This a lot of bounds. No, it says in. Saved by Carter. They got, they got five on four basketball. Good news. Dishes it out to Dean, or Carter, excuse me. Phillips now. Yeah, good job by North St. Paul. Looked like everybody was playing, like there was 10 seconds left to go in the game. Still plenty of time. So Phillips up to Langford Johnson. Langford Johnson, it looks like T North St. Paul's going to slow it down. Tartan's going to have to play some big defense here. Nice defense by Kearney. In high school basketball, John, they could hold it till zero if they really wanted to. Yeah, now they got the ball in their best player's hands. It's in good news' hands. They're going to have to force him to dribble. Crosses over Weems. Weems with that tight defense. Something's got to happen here. Look, as you said, Sam, North St. Paul can run up the clock. You wonder if Tartan's just going to have to start fouling. No foul. That one's on the ground. Still six fouls now. And that won't, yeah, as you say, that will not get North St. Paul to the free throw line. I think Dewan Carter thought he was going to the line. So nothing major there, just something that North St. Paul really needed to do to get the ball back. Carter looked to go up strong with it. Mark Klingsborn now has got to draw something up to get the ball back. But Sam, we got a ball game. Absolutely. I mean, looked up at the scoreboard, and all of a sudden it's 47 44. I thought Tartan was maybe uh, dead and buried there for a second, but they have come back 47 45 with less than a minute left to go. Couldn't have scripted any better. Yeah, so let's look at that section 4 4 8 tournament bracket. As we talked about, Creighton Durham Hall, the one seed who these two, who these two teams. Whoever wins will go on to play next. Yeah, pretty sure that Creighton Stillwater game's going on right now as the rest of these uh, quarterfinal matchups are going as well. Got a Fab Four team going, White Bear Lake against Woodbury. Uh, that Stillwater team didn't have a great year this year, so Creighton for sure is going to win that one. And we'll see who they'll face in the semifinals. Yeah. That would be at Creighton if they were the winner as the high seed, I believe, unless the semifinals go to a neutral location. Yeah, Creighton just an outstanding team. They're going to take a big hit. When they lose Oturu, but you know what? I'm really excited to watch him next year at the U of M taking that big man that they need. Nonetheless, how about the showing by both these schools fans tonight, Sam? Absolutely awesome. These teams always show out for this big rivalry. Not surprised at all to see, it, especially with playoffs on uh, into the mix. Even more people here, families, got fans of the high school kids dressed up in costume you know what I mean it's just a great atmosphere got the band right next to us so we certainly are feeling the atmosphere as well you're dang right Sam what do you think's uh, gonna happen here in the next 52 seconds I don't know John that's the beauty of sports it I is, do Sam. not know but this is a big possession right here we're gonna see what if North does yeah, see what happens here it looked like they went for the steal then they had to make the foul. I don't think that's a terrible foul because I'm pretty sure North would have held the ball. Yeah, you know, it, Phillips was driving a little out of control. Jake was Whitmore picked the wrong time to go for that steal, and he gets called for the foul because goal or because Phillips has the right away. Excuse me, and Phillips will go to the line. Yeah, you want that foul to come more on the inbound pass itself. Be a little over aggressive, trying to jump a lane. And he Bryce misses. Phillips. Sorry, Sam. He misses. Kimmins has it with 42 seconds left to go. Kimmins looks over to Coach Klingsborn, throws it. Phillips almost picks that one off. That one could have almost sealed the game. I wouldn't say sealed the game, but Tartan would have had to foul again, or they would have been on a fast break the other way. Yeah, this is a very big possession for Tartan. Boy, the way Tartan's been shooting free throws, if you're north, you might even consider just fouling. Tartan's going to need to call a timeout here. And Jacobs Whitmore gets it. Looks like he gets the, should have been an and one. He gets the lamp to go. 28 seconds left to play. We're all tied up here. 47-47. How about the deflection? <laughs> the luck is with Tartan right now. The luck of the Titans is the deflection goes right to Andre Jenkins Whitmore, but take nothing away from him as he converted the bucket. Looks like we're going to get a timeout by Coach Johnson. 13 seconds left, Sam. 
Who do you think's getting the ball on this next possession? Boy, I don't know. You might want to use good news as a little bit of a distraction factor. We talked about it. North St. Paul's got a lot of good players on this team. One kid who might be sneaky out there if he's on the court, Bateman, three-point specialist. You might forget about him a little bit as you're from Tartan's defense. Kick it out to the three-point man and knock down a big game winner. One thing I'm really surprised about, Sam, the refs have been blowing their whistles all game. Jenkins Whitmore looked like he had an and one on that shot. Not called. Good news, got a handful of Jenkins Whitmore. Nonetheless, it's a tie walk. I kind of like that, though, John. It's playoff basketball. Let them play a little bit. You know what I mean? A lot of times you get these, uh, you know, hand check fouls, a lot of fouls, fouls just interrupting the game. I thought the refs have done a pretty nice job letting the teams just play it out. Maybe it's a little more physical than they're used to, so teams kind of had to adjust to that a little bit, but they've got to play basketball rather than shoot free throws. It's almost to say that... If you're North St. Paul, they definitely they definitely should use good news as a distraction. Get the ball out to somebody who's been scoring high. That's Lakers a tough call because I mean, good news has such good size; he can elevate above anyone and get off a clean shot. So he's like, if you get him in, in, get it into him at the elbow, he likes that little turnaround jump shot. So if you can make that work, you see Bryce Phillips, good news, Damian Johnson, all talking things over. So it might have to go through those two. Boy, we got a lot of the Tartan girls basketball team in-house. We saw them pull off an awesome win against Wiper Lake. Almost a buzzer-beating three-pointer. We got a similar situation going on right here. Here we Great go. Great basketball here on SEC Sports. They ran a play for Good News. He sprung out free. He's got the ball at the top of the key. Ten seconds left to go. Good News on Weems. Weems is at tough defense all night. Good News shoots it, misses. Sam, he talked about the refs holding the whistles in their mouths. I don't know if that was the biggest foul. Good news is going to go to the line for two. John, you got to wonder if uh, maybe the refs thought they should have called it on the initial right there, maybe. No contact there. Rebound. Looks like Good News got away with it over the back. Could have got over the back on him. Had a little bit of his forearm Reeves on Nikhil Williams. Reeves didn't even touch him on that one. Terrible call. No bias here. I love both these teams. I just think that's that's terrible. Well, not surprising that I was talking all about how they let them play basketball and they've been doing a great job. We maybe have a questionable call, but here's the thing. Three seconds on the clock for Tartan. They put back an extra point eight up there. Talk about the Tartan girls getting past Wiper Lake. They, they hit a game-winning shot with 2.5 left to go, so plenty of time. So, three seconds left to go. Tar Tartan down by one. Good news, looking to make it two. Good news, you might want to miss this on purpose. He gets the roll to go. We're going to get a timeout by Tartan. Well, this is big because Tartan has really struggled to hit three-pointers all night. They've hit a couple here in the second half. But you just wonder who's it going to go to. Antoine Kimmins, kind of their go-to player, not really a three-point specialist, more of a drive type of guy. Are they going to, you know, they don't have time for that. It's going to have to be a catch-and-shoot type of situation. You get it down to Hartman. Hartman, you only need a two. You throw an inbounds pass out to the out to mid court. Get it to Hartman. Three seconds is a long time in basketball, Sam. So you get it out to mid court, quick dish, quick turnaround, Jay, something like that. Maybe Leitner, I don't know. I don't envy these coaches, I, that's for sure. I'm, I'm thinking maybe you want to just have Antoine Kimmon just sprint it towards the hoop, go for a layup, hope he gets contact and goes to the free throw line. Yep. But then again, you're thinking, well, I can't put it in the hands of the referees. I think you try to go up and draw a foul. You throw it as far as you can. Ball cool. will be inbounded from the far baseline. That was another thing I had to... I was wondering about because I thought maybe with the timeout, but I think here in high school, yeah, they're going to have to inbound from under the basket, so you're going to have to drop whatever miracle play you got. I couldn't be more excited to call this last play, Sam. This is uh, this has been a fun game, and uh... oh, it's been great. It's awesome to see Coach uh, Mark Klingsporn of Tartan has been there for 26 years. You think he hasn't seen a situation like this before? Excited to see how it unravels. So Jenkins Whitmore will be looking in for the inbounds. Kimmins is in the middle here. Weems on the outside. Three players down. Looks like they're going to throw this one out. Kimmins is wide open. He's going to drive here. He shoots it up. Air balls it. That's game. That's your final, folks. North St. Paul 49. Tartan. 47 here at the opening round of the Section 4, 4A Finals for John Miller and Sam Erickson. That's all, folks.